everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of video editing, just like I do for my uh, YouTube videos using Caden Live. Uh, you know, past few weeks I've gotten several emails uh, asking me how I edit my videos, so um, you know, I figured, hey, why not? I'll just uh, I'll do a video on how to do a video. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, as far as the recording goes, uh, you can see right here uh, the little image of me that's coming from my webcam. Uh, I use GUVC, GUVC video to display that. Um, there's other webcam programs you could use. You could use uh, uh, Cheese. You can use, oh, like I said, there, there's a bunch of others. Anyway, that's how I get the little image of me down here. Um, for the actual video recording of the desktop, I use Simple Screen Recorder. Let me drag over the, um, yeah, there's a little dialog box for setting up Simple Screen Recorder. Once again, there's other uh, pieces of software that you can use for recording uh, your desktop. There's, uh, what is it, Kazam, there is uh, Record My Desktop, and there's others, uh, but that's what I use. But when it comes to the actual editing, Caden Live is the program that I use. Now, the, and, and to kind of back up a little bit, you don't have to be doing a YouTube video to use Caden Live to edit videos. I mean, it, you know, if you're maybe putting together, uh, you know, home video you know whatever editing home videos or you know any any kind of video work you can use Kden live for it um, and I just did a fresh install of it so I can show you you know everything that goes along with setting it up and whatnot so let me pull it up Kden live and it's a KDE program um, you know uh, now that doesn't mean that you can't use it on a known based uh, distribution. Um, you're just going to have extra libraries that you got to pull down. No big deal. So, you know, these are all the modules I'm going to install. Available codexes. Um, pretty much, I stick with the default settings. And then over here for my video standard. Um, I will go to, let me find it here. There it is. HD 1080p 30 frames per second, which gives you a 1920 by 1080 screen for your frame size, which is the exact same size as my main monitor. Um, it shows the frame rate, pixel aspect ratio, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's what I always set as my default. There's my default project folder. You can set it to whatever it is that you want. Uh, be sure that you have this active crash recovery autosave set up. And the reason is Caden Live does freeze up and crash on occasion. And by having this option checked, um, it's constantly autosaving your uh, your projects so when Caden Live crashes and like I said it will crash on you on occasion uh, just the nature of the beast you're not gonna lose anything so anyway you got that um, I'm not using an additional capture device so I'm just gonna leave all that blank next and checking system yep and setting it up for me Okay, now you can go and change your layout uh, for everything here. I mean, you, it's basically set up like modules, so you can you can move stuff around and all that kind of stuff. Um, probably the easiest thing though is for me. I'll start. Um, I've got a video to edit and put together, so you can kind of watch as I do that and get an idea of, of uh, how I do things, and also at the same time see how Caden Live works. So, we're going to start a new project, it's going to be right there in that folder, 
three video tracks, two audio tracks. That's that's the default. I typically stay with that. No reason to change. Uh, okay, so I'll click OK on that. Okay, so I created a new project, and then I will let me go and start adding stuff to it. Ah, I'm not thinking today. Okay, let's start adding some clips here. Now, as you can see in my project folder, I've got, you know, a lot of stuff saved in this project folder. Um, I've, I've got a full, I've got a subfolder in there for my completed videos. I've got one for my unrendered videos. Uh, one for my YouTube thumbnails, uh, which I make those in GIMP. Um, my music tracks, all that kind of stuff. And up here, intro and ending credits. I'm going to add this... Um, YouTube ending and the YouTube closing. Don't worry about the order for now. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about that later. And then the videos that I just finished. Let's see. Those will be in my video. Putting together this LibreOffice video. We'll drag all those in here. Okay, so for for putting together the the video, it's just kind of a drag and drop thing for the most part. So here's my YouTube intro. I'm gonna drag it down here. Video spot one, and then the first of the LibreOffice tracks. I'll put it right there. And if you put put your um, mouse right on a the corner there you see that blinking triangle if you click that what it does is it makes a transition between the two uh, between the two files and you can see if you click on that transition it shows you what kind you got the default is a dissolve um, and this reverse is as is, is uh, whether that's checked or not, by default it'll pick the correct one, or at least it usually does, whether you're dissolving from video one to video two or video two to video one. So, um, like I said, it usually picks the right one for you. And there are other transitions. I mean, that's just, I always go with that default one, but there are other ones that you can go with. Uh, you can see there's quite a list there. And, uh, you know, if you're going to make your own videos, I would suggest. Uh, just getting on this thing and playing with it find what you like I, I'm perfectly happy with the whole dissolve thing that works best for me but uh, you know do what you like now before I go any farther with setting this up I'm gonna go and save and the reason is, is I don't want to lose what I've got so um, like I said this this uh, Caden Live has a tendency to crash. And it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. So I'm just going to save over in here. And this is um, LibreOffice Review. I'll save it. That And now, from now on, if this thing crashes, I can just open up LibreOffice Review and it'll go to the autosave for me. Anyway, so we've got our two tracks in there, we've got the transition between them, and over in here this is like a a, a uh, work in progress view. So now you can click on that. And this is what's done been done so far. Hello everybody, AJ Rising. So you you can like I said you can you know, check on your progress, see how certain things look and whatnot. And then we're going to scroll this all the way down here and actually let me move my picture out of the way. We'll put it over there for now. And I always let my videos run a little long at the end. And sometimes, sometimes it's not even that. Sometimes I'll be working on something and something goes wrong and I need to cut a clip out of it. So you can go and 
if you wanted to watch the whole thing nonstop, you could, but you can just click on, you know, up here on this little, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, a time bar. Um, and, you know, go to that particular point and, uh, you know, start, uh, you know, uh, look at it from that point. So long story short, on this uh, on this particular clip, I really bought something up, and ha ended up doing the majority of the clip over. So I'm gonna try to find the approximate spot where I stopped. Okay, back up from there. And like I said, you can find you know you can watch your video. Uh, you know, you can find spots where you need to go and cut a clip, and you can do that. So, I'm going to do that now. Okay, so this is where I need to cut the clip, where, here where the line is. So if I just go to the right hand side of it, right, cl right click, go down to cut clip. Uh, the one, this, the, the section that is in pink, you can go and click delete and it will disappear. So the, the clip is cut. Now you could always go and cut that clip and maybe you need to do insert something um, after it and then still use that clip that you know you cut, you can do that. Um, don't need to do it in that case, but uh, uh, you know, if you need to go and cut and insert something, and you can do that. All right, so now we're going to drag down part number two. And I'll add another transition, and let's take a look and see how that's going to look. Okay, not a bad transition. So anyway, and you know, I'm just going to basically continue doing that. Um, and uh, as they say, that's all she wrote. I tell you what, rather than you just sitting here watching me cut clips and do all that kind of stuff, I'm going to pause it, and then when I get to the end, put put uh, you know, putting the last clip on there, then I'll show you how to actually render the video. Okay, we're back. I've got all my clips in place and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, as you can see, I just kind of go back and forth between the two video tracks. Um, I do a transition between everyone and whatnot. Now, I'm not adding any additional audio because the the clips that the video clips that I made they've already got the audio added in um, you can go and add additional audio so like if you wanted to have say a background music playing or you know you need the little audio clips added you can do that right there you can also go and on the various clips let's see if I think you can show it and right click it I know I had to play with it around with a little bit to remember how to do it, but you can go and separate out the uh, the audio. You know, if you got a video clip here, it's got audio in it. You can go and separate those out if if need be. Um, and there's tons and tons of additional stuff that I I generally don't do just because my videos are pretty simple to put together. I mean, you just basically splice the clips together, put an intro and an ending on it, and boom, I'm done. Um, but if you want to do green screen, uh, you can do that. There's, you know, all kinds of effects available. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't say the sky's the limit, but there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this, this program. Anyway, so I've got, I've got my track basically laid out. I'll do another save and come up here to render. And let me pull it down here so you can see. Uh, and there's all kinds of uh, format 
parts that you that they've already got set up for you so that you don't have to go in and do it yourself me personally for my uh, for my YouTubes I do an mp4 which it, with h264 and AAC coding uh, if you come down here this encoder threads that's basically how many um, cores of your processor are going to be rendering this video now video and audio rendering take a fair amount of processing power so the more the more cores that you can have working on this the faster it's going to go um, so you know if you got say a quad core processor you know you use at least two on there um, the rest of the stuff at least down here I'm not going to have to fool with just because it's you know it's set up the way that I want um, I'll come up here and set my output file which I'll put dump it into my completed YouTube video f folder and we will call this um, library office Just review save it as that and click on render to file and just gotta let it do its thing you see I got the little message up there we're rendering the video and I'll save it in an mp4 and usually after the first couple of minutes it'll come up with a little you know instead of saying there it goes estimated time 37 almost almost 38 minutes to uh, to render the video but that's basically it for the rendering uh, I mean on the YouTube side of things I do my upload and then uh, you've probably all seen the custom thumbnail that I use which is basically after this video is done I'll take a screenshot of some place in the video and then add my title to it and that becomes my video thumbnail and that's I mean that's pretty much it for making up the YouTube video is not really too hard to do and like I said you can use this for for you know making up the home video or you know I don't know uh, something uh, you know you got to do some promo videos for work or whatever uh, awesome program to do all this on um, and for all the people out there that are saying, oh, you got to have Macintosh to be able to do, you know, create good videos and audios, no. So, <laughs> I mean, this does, you know, basically everything that I, that I could ever want it to do. Um, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, the, the, the Mac guy's got some software that, uh, um, you know might not do better job on professional videos but for what I do this is more than enough um, and if you don't want to use Caden Live there's another um, probably the, the the other very popular uh, uh, open source software to use is OpenShot which is a I guess you could think of it as a known version of Caden Live, except it's very much, uh, it's much more simplified. Um, I know a lot of people like it. It it also does a good job of rendering videos. Uh, in the early days, it was kind of glitchy and whatnot, for, but from what I've seen in uh, in recent years, um, it it does pretty well, as a uh, pretty good job as well. But that about finishes this video up. Uh, Thanks a lot for watching. As always, uh, if you enjoyed it, give it a big old thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my uh, channel so that you can keep getting these great videos. Oh, also, I almost forgot. Uh, for those of you that are sci-fi readers, take a trip on over to my blog page, ariaprime.com. You can read first chapter of Chronicles of Aria Prime. Uh, episode one for free and my newsletter subscribers over on that site uh, you can get a free PDF copy of that whole novella so if you want a little light uh, uh, sci-fi reading for in the evening uh, go over there and pick that up uh, once again thanks a lot for uh, watching and uh, see y'all next time